Now I am going to prove this. Now the proof is pretty straightforward and it uses uh, the concept of orthonormal basis. So let us quickly remember what is an orthonormal basis. Is an orthonormal basis is uh, <coughs> just like what we think of a coordinate system, the usual coordinate system that we learn in school. So here I have shown one orthonormal system. So it is this origin and on for the origin there are three arrows coming out in three directions. They are mutually perpendicular, each of them has got length 1. So that is standard way of thinking about a coordinate system. It is a special kind of basis. Now the way I will choose my basis is the following. I will take the, I will first start, I, I, I will take an orthonormal basis such that the first few elements of the basis will span column space of x and the remaining will poke up into the orthogonal complement. So the linear algebraic way of stating this is you start with column space of x, you take an orthonormal basis of column space of x, you extend it to an orthonormal basis of the entire space. So in this picture, I started with this column space of x that was my origin and then what I did, I took two vectors orthonormal basis of uh, this fellow, of, of this one vector is these and the other vector is these. I took these two unit length mutually perpendicular. They span this pink space completely. Then I extended that to an orthonormal basis of entire R3 which basically means I took this thing which is perpendicular to the plane and it, since there is only dimension 1 left out, I have only one thing. If it is an n dimensional space and column space of x is R dimensional, you will have R arrows in, along the space and N minus R arrows sticking up. I cannot draw a picture of course for that, but this is the basic idea. Now let us understand clearly, if I take my Y vector, this data vector and I express it as in terms of this, uh, this orthonormal basis. So there will be some component along this direction, some component along this direction, some component along that direction. Now think this, I will think about this carefully and understand this. If I look at all the components along these cyan arrows, that is the things that are lying on the column space of x, all those things together will actually give me this projection. So is that clear? So I am taking all the that part of the orthonormal basis which is on the my column space of x, in my example the cyan arrows, I consider the components of this green vector, the y vector along those cyan directions and take the sum of all those things. They will give me the projection of the green vector on the column space of x, namely this red arrow. Similarly, if I take all the remaining components, in this case the component of the y vector along this thing, along this, uh, what should I say, this flaming orange arrow, in that case that will give me the component of y orthogonal to column space of x. So there may be multiple such arrows, in my case it is just R3, so I do not have more arrows, more such flaming arrows. So if I have more such arrows, take the orthogonal, take the component of all these things, of the y vector along all those things, take them together, that will give you this red arrow. So is that clear? That is very important. So if it is not clear, just rewind the video and understand this part. Okay. So this y minus x beta hat, that is basically given by the sum total of all the components of this green vector along these things. Now here is something very useful. So when I take an orthonormal basis and I want to find out the components of a vector with respect to that orthonormal basis, that is a very simple formula. So let us quickly recall that. Suppose I have an orthonormal basis V1 to Vn, O and B. And I have some vector 
square y. I am using the same notation y. And I want to express y as a linear combination of v1 to vn. I know that such a thing exists because it is a basis. But if it is an orthonormal basis, I have a very nice way of writing it down. And that way is simply the following. That will be, so the component of component of y along any vi, if I want to find that out, that will be simply vi transpose y. So, I should better say that <coughs> the, by the component, I mean the coefficient. So, the, you might say the component is the vector along vi, in that case it will be this times the vi vector. So, this is, I will write that. So, this is the scalar coefficient of the vi vector. You just take the usual dot product, the usual inner product. Inner product between the y, the thing that you are projecting and vi, the direction along which you are projecting. That is the property of orthonormal basis. If it is some other kind of basis, that need not be true. So, that is one advantage why we work with orthonormal basis. So, these are the different components. <clears throat> so, I can give you a simple example. Suppose the thing that we have 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. If I give you a vector x, y, z, then what is the component along this? You just take dot product of, sorry, you cannot see this. So, you just take the dot product of x, y, z with this 1, 0, 0 and what will you get? You will get just x. So, it is x times 1, 0, 0 plus what is the component of x, y, z along 0, 1, 0? Take the dot product, it will be just y. So, it is y times 0, 1, 0 plus what is the dot product of this and this? That is z, 0, 0, 1 and indeed this is equal to this thing. <clears throat> and this also gives us something useful. If I want to find out squared norm of this thing, all that I need to do is to square these things and add. So, when we work with Euclidean basis, we are always used to thinking of the squared norm as the squared, sum of the squared components. But this is actually true for any orthonormal basis, not necessarily the Euclidean basis. So, we are going to use these facts here.